Hey, I'm Dave Asprey, father of biohacking, founder of Bulletproof. And biohacking is the art and science of changing the environment around you and inside of you so that you have full control of your own biology. I've changed the environment around myself here on Vancouver Island. This is the small organic farm where I live. Behind me is Bulletproof Labs Alpha. And I actually do walk the talk because all this stuff here is what my family eats. It's what I eat because it leads to a different level of performance. You feel better and hey, it tastes good. And I use some of the things that grow here in the garden when I cook in order to allow me to do things with cooking that aren't that beneficial for you. Barbecuing meat is well established to increase your risk of cancer, inflammation, and all sorts of other bad things, but there are ways to hack that and you can do it with plants. So one of the first things you're going to need is some herbs. One of the most important ones is growing right here in my garden. You can also use the dried form. This is oregano. Oregano has antioxidants in it, but the more interesting one is rosemary. In multiple studies, rosemary is shown to inhibit lipid oxidation. And this is why I use rosemary in some bulletproof supplements, but also if you put it in your marinade and you expose your meat to really oxidized fats and proteins coming off of those amazing coals, you really reduce your risk of inflammation as a result. And the final thing that works in other studies is called thyme. There's some thyme with little thymey flowers on it. So what you want to do is take your herbs, fresh, smells amazing, powdered is okay, and mix them with your oil and put it on your meat before you cook it. And the kind of oil you use really matters. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. When you want to make a marinade for your barbecue, it's critical that you use rosemary, oregano, and probably thyme. And the reason you do that is that if you use it with an oil, you can protect the fat on the meat from being damaged. The higher the temperature, the bigger the problem. The more you have fat and protein dripping onto hot coals or hot smoker elements, if you're using a, a gas-powered grill, the worse the problem is. So you'll see restaurants that they say, we have a 1500 degree grill. Great, you can char the meat, but all the studies show more charring equals advanced glycation end products, things called PAHs, and these cause aging and mitochondrial dysfunction and increase your risk of all kinds of bad things, including cardiovascular risk. So is it meat that's bad for you or is it burned meat? Well, we know burned meat's bad for you, so let's not do that. And we know grass-fed meat has benefits. So I'm gonna show you how to make grass-fed meat over a real fire in the least harmful way possible and very, very delicious. I'm going to start by chopping this nice mix of rosemary, oregano, and thyme. The reason you slice the herbs is you want to get the volatile organics and the antioxidants out of the herbs and into the oil. The oil is going to form a barrier that, predict, that protects against something called lipid peroxidation, which is one of the main problems. However, if you cook your food over an open flame, you're still going to have problems with it. This just reduces the problems. But as you'll see, I'm going to cook it over griddle so that we don't have the same problem. Now, what can you do for oil? If you know you're going to be cooking at moderate temperature, brain octane works fine. And brain octane is stable up to 320 degrees Fahrenheit. It is a saturated fat. Any saturated fat is going to be way more stable than corn oil, even grapeseed oil, or any of the other oils that are polyunsaturated are not ideal. Bulletproof's grass-fed ghee is ideal, but ooh, here's a problem. Did you notice this is not liquid? So you can heat the ghee up, which is something that works really well, just a very mild heat, and or you could rub it into the meat and put the spices on it. In this case, I am going to use brain octane oil because it's easier. So I'm gonna put a little bit of brain octane onto the spices, and I'm just gonna mash it up with a spoon. Deal is, Get them really mixed. When you mix it up, you get the antioxidants and the fat soluble compounds into the oil. And when you do it right, the oil actually takes on a little bit of a green tinge. I also could have marinated for hours ahead of time if I wanted to. When you barbecue, don't eat industrial animal meat. It's gross and it's bad for you. So if it came from animals that ate corn and soy and things that were given antibiotics and glyphosate and stuff like that, it's unethical, it's bad for soil, it's bad for your gut bacteria, it's bad for you, bad for the animals, everybody loses. So go grass fed or go home. This is amazing steak that comes from Grass Roots Co-op. And each of these comes from an animal that ate only grass throughout its entire life. And you'll see there's a couple different cuts here. I've got 
these amazing tenderloins, the most tender part. And you might say, oh, tenderloin, it's so good. You notice there's almost no fat in these. With grass-fed animals, the fat is the most nutritious and amazing part. So if you're gonna eat an industrial animal, which you shouldn't, you need to avoid the fat from those animals, especially because it has the worst stuff in it. So you'd wanna eat tenderloin from an industrial animal if you were going to go against my advice and eat an industrial animal. The ones that are amazing are ribeyes. Look at that fat. That is the fat that is the stuff of life and it tastes amazing. So what I'm gonna do here is first, I'm gonna get as much of this marinade on here as I can. If you're new to adulting, you might wanna make sure that you follow food safety rules, which means don't touch the raw meat with a spoon and then stick it back in the marinade, unless you're gonna use all the marinade because then you would introduce raw meat juice, which is bad news. So what I'm gonna do here is just get all this on here. And I am going to use the spoon to mash it in because, well, I'm not reusing this marinade. Next up, you mash it around. Get it all up in there. Now, if you're not really used to barbecuing, you gotta touch the meat. Wash your hands when you're done. You need to really get the herbs and spices in there as much as you can. Your taste buds will thank you later. Now, there's two kinds of salt you might wanna consider. One is good old fashioned Himalayan salt. Don't use industrial salt because it doesn't taste as good. It's bitter and it usually has aluminum flowing agents in it. Too much salt isn't gonna taste good. No salt at all doesn't taste good. And people who are stressed need extra salt. But here's a hack for barbecuing. Smoke salt, like this stuff. This is smoked in alder, but you can get salt that's smoked in the thing. This has all the flavor of smoke with none of the harmful compounds. When you put fat over smoke, what you get is the carcinogenic parts of the smoke and the fat. This is not that. They actually smoke the salt directly without the fat compounds in the salt. So I'm adding the flavor of real smoke. This isn't that fake liquid smoke stuff. This is real smoke, the same that would come on your meat without the bad parts. Let's get over to the grill. You might be tempted to say, all right, I'm gonna throw the meat over uh, just an open grill and I'm gonna have the flame kiss the meat. You know what? You can do that. It is simply not good for you. If you have a griddle that you can put on your grill, you're gonna get a very different effect and it's going to be much, much less of a problem for you. So what I'm gonna do before I breathe all the smoke is I'm going to set these beautiful pieces of meat with plenty of oil so they don't stick onto the grill. One of the things that works best is having highly qualified kitchen assistants. Uh, my son, Alan, is probably going to be my assistant in this one. Are you going to help? Yes. Here, hold these. All right. All right, nice work. All right, give them back. Them back. No. <laughs> now, here's something that, unless you're really into cooking, you're probably not going to know about. You can say, how do I know if these are done versus burned? Well, if you have your hand and you're just holding it like this, and you push right here without gripping at all, that's a rare piece of steak, right? If you squeeze very lightly, medium rare, a little bit more of a grip, that's medium. And if you squeeze all the way, that's well. If you like well, you can stop watching right now because pretty much you're ruining your meat. Don't burn your meat, that's mean. Uh, however, even medium well, you could probably get away with that. And if you're my friend, Michelle, I'm talking about you. Stop burning your meat already. All right, when the meat's ready to be turned over, it should let go. See how this doesn't want to let go yet? That means one of two things. One, I probably didn't season this griddle enough ahead of time, or the meat isn't ready yet. And I'll tell you in a second on this first one. Yep, it's not ready yet. This one is getting there because it's ready to let go. And it's kind of neat, the meat tells you what it needs to do. And you can always test for doneness after you turn it over just by pushing on the meat to see if it's rare or medium rare. Now, one of the benefits here is you really can't cook over an open fire. You need coals. However, when you're using a griddle, you can do it. And this is cooling off a bit. So we're gonna throw some fresh wood on, heat the griddle up. Something else that you might wanna think about, if you're doing this in the forest, in your backyard, the kind of wood you cook with can impart a flavor. So cherry, oak, things like that are good. But if you're using green treated wood, plywood, anything that's been painted, just don't cook with that and don't cook over coals with that because your chances of getting lead or from the green stuff, arsenic, are really meaningful. Now you might be tempted to ask, how many minutes per side? Bad news, this is not a convection oven, this isn't sous vide, this is a barbecue. And the temperature of the meat when you start, the temperature of the grill, how hot the fire is, the wind, the ambient temperature, 
and whether you've got a collection of forest fairies watching you or not are probably all variables and each piece of meat is going to require you to touch it. All right, it's time for some flipping here. Let's do the ribeye first. Definitely still rare and medium rare as you'd expect. You see the herbs get cooked on, which is kind of cool. This is getting to be more medium rare. What I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna add a few more herbs. Now, if I put this in a smoker for 24 hours, it would taste amazing. Um, hickory would be good, but there's something called Santa Maria red oak, which is a kind of oak that only grows down in the Santa Barbara region um, of California. And you can cook with it and it'll dye your meat this bright red color with really distinctive flavor. Problem is, if you smoke for a long time, you can seriously increase the carcinogens. And the reason that happens is that the compounds from the smoke change your gut bacteria. Now, what would protect you from that? Tons of herbs before you smoke will probably help. A tiny pinch of vitamin C, believe it or not, can really, really reduce that. Too much of it's gonna give it a sour flavor, but we're talking a very small amount in your marinade, and probably even lemon juice could help a little bit. And if you were to really go all out, you could take some of the bulletproof activated charcoal whenever you eat any kind of processed meat, including stuff you smoke yourself, and that's a good practice uh, to follow because charcoal can help to absorb all sorts of different toxins. So I'm gonna pull these amazing grassroots co-op grass-fed steaks off the grill. And what I've done here is I've used herbs and the specific types of oils in order to reduce the formation of damaged fats in the steak. And I cooked over a griddle instead of over an open flame to help protect the food from what the smoke and the fire itself does. And because I use smoked salt on it, you're going to get that amazing flavor of smoked salt, which is exactly what you wanted. I am going to finish it with some chopped fresh herbs. Rosemary, thyme, and oregano are the ones that show the most protection against fatty acid oxidation, and it's going to be amazing. Hey Alan, you wanna be my guinea pig? You wanna try this? Sure. All right, give this a try. Tell me what you think. Edible? Delicious. All right, let me try this. Oh yeah. I think we should eat the rest of this. What do you think? Don't save some for Mama. <laughs> Hear that? He said we should save some for Mama and his sister. You're a good son, Alan. And that steak makes me happy.